This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learn something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. It's not because we want to, but sometimes we make mistakes. And therefore, you need to know how to edit functions and formulas in the event that you have goofed or somebody else has goofed and you're going back to fix it. Well, in my Excel spreadsheet here, I've made some mistakes. Let's take a look at one obvious way you can identify errors or, and or potential errors. See how this cell right here, the 553 has that little green corner and the 457 has that little green corner? That indicates there's a potential problem in this cell. Let me click here. You see the little exclamation point? It tells me the formula in this cell differs from the formulas in this area of the spreadsheet. So let me hit escape to make that disappear. And let's double click and see what this formula looks like. See, it's adding up. Let's go check this one. It's adding up. Well, let me double click on 457 because double clicking lets you go into the formula and see what's going on. Oh, here's what's happening here. Column F, G, and H are all up. They're all going up to calculate. And all of a sudden in I, the sum of I is moving to the left instead of going up. That's not a problem at all. That calculation is going to be the same whether I add the three cells to the left or I add the three cells above it because they all include the same totals. Now, if they didn't include the same totals, that would be a huge problem. And here's how you would fix it. You would just say, well, this part, and you highlight the segment that's not accurate, the F7 through H7 is not accurate, and then you would simply click and drag the accurate cells and hit your Enter key. So now you can see that the little corner piece is gone because it's not warning you that there's a potential problem. There's a potential error in here. This one, now that we know what the problem is, you don't have to change it. Remember, I only changed it to show you how to change it, but if you double click and you look, you say, no, that's fine, I'm okay with that. Hit escape, because escape lets you exit the behind the scenes look at the formula without accidentally changing the formula. And then if you want that little corner piece to disappear, you just click on the exclamation point and you say, ignore this error. I, I'm not worried about this error because it's not really an error. So look for those little corner pieces. Sometimes they're just annoyingly present and there's not a problem, but sometimes there's a huge problem. Now this spreadsheet has some other problems, but they're not marking for me. They're not you know, glaring, telling me, hey, hey, big problem, big problem. Here's one of the problems I can see. Uh, zero for the totals for January, February, and March. You no, know, that's not accurate at all. And so I'm gonna go double click on the zero to see what's going on. Oh, see, someone accidentally grabbed the wrong calculation there. I don't want to calculate Bob. So there are a couple of ways that you can make adjustments. Let me just show you the two methods. One method is go to the border of the, the outlined area and see the four-headed arrow? Click, hold, drag, and don't let go and move it. Right? You can move it anywhere. As long as you have double-clicked into the function and you can see underneath, you can actually see the function instead of the answer, you have a lot of flexibility. And then the other thing is these corners. See how the mouse turns into a two-headed arrow on any of the corners? You can simply grab the corner and you can drag to resize the area of the calculation. And you can do anything you want to here, folks. You just drag it until it encloses the numbers that you actually want. Let me drag this back up with my four-headed arrow. So now I've actually included the accurate cells that I need here for my calculation, and then I hit the Enter key. Now, would you agree I did a little more than I needed to just to show you how? Let's just double check. Yep, this one's okay, and then that one's okay as well. These I already checked. These are fine, but we have a problem out here in the grand totals. It's only grabbing the totals. Let's double, double click here and see what happened. You see, someone accidentally only included the, the total for the second quarter, and they forgot the total for the first quarter. You see how the cursor, let me hit escape, just so you know I didn't do anything here. Double clicking, and the cursor here is in the word sum because that's just where when I double clicked it landed. You want to make sure you're inside of the parentheses, right? You want to make sure you're in the arguments where you can fix things. And it shows you here at the bottom, 
it's called syntax, and syntax is the way you write it. It shows you the syntax for a function that's the sum, and it says, well, you take a number. Now, if you have more than one number, you separate with a comma, and then you put the next number. So I have to type a comma in here, and then go click on the additional cell that I want included in this calculation. So now it identifies that it's going to be adding E4 and I4 to get the grand total, and now we have an accurate answer. Well, to make this fast, I'll just drag down the autofill because it's the same pattern all the way down, but I do not want to fill, so I'll choose fill without formatting. So now this spreadsheet has been corrected so that my problems no longer exist on this spreadsheet. And as you notice, some of these are really obvious. It was really easy to see what was going on, that there's a potential problem. Some of them weren't quite so obvious. So make sure that you're not assuming everything is accurate on your spreadsheet. You're checking to be sure that everything is accurate on your spreadsheet. Now I want to show you another option out here. So let's go over to this spreadsheet. And on this spreadsheet, I want to show you something that was done and how you could potentially correct it. So let's go to this um, smaller version of it. And if someone did the average sales, going drop down, average sales, and I want the average sales for these nine cells, and now they have the average cells, well, here's a problem that people have. They try to shortcut things. So let me show you what someone might do. They might click on average cell, copy it, go here to maximum cell, sale, excuse me, and paste it in. And then the only difference in the functionality between, not functionality, excuse me, the syntax between average and maximum, the only difference is instead of saying average right here, it says max. So if someone simply copied and pasted and they changed the name of the function, it could be fine. But we have a little problem here. And the little problem here is that when I copied and pasted, I moved from row four to row five. Look what it did to my numbers over here. It said, oh, well, if you're going to shift down a row, I'm also going to shift down a row. And now it's grabbing the wrong numbers. So I can click with the four-headed arrow, drag it back up. So some people might be trying to cut some corners and copying and pasting and then going in to adjust. You can, as we just showed, it might not be faster, but it's very, very possible to do that. So I'll just hit the Enter key, and then we'll move forward. Well, one last thing. I want to see if I have, I do. I have some range names here. So let's go find out where first quarter is. There we go. There's first quarter here and here. So let me show you why range names might make what we just tried a little bit faster. So first quarter average. We're going to drop down, choose average, start typing first, double click. So now instead of using actual cell addresses, we're using a range name to create the average. Let me go ahead and enter that. Copy. We're going to do exactly what I did on the other spreadsheet. Paste. Double click to change it. And I'm going to change the average to max. And look how this one works much better. All I had to do here was change the name of the function. And remember, that's only because the syntax for average and max are exactly the same. This does not work when your functions have different syntax. But the syntax is the same. And now it goes and finds the first quarter, which doesn't require any adjustment because it knows exactly what the first quarter sales are. And so we just hit the Enter key. And now we have the proper item in here, the, the proper calculation inside of max. So now you know some quick tricks for adjusting and making changes. I really recommend double clicking on a cell because when you double click on a cell, you can see the underlying function. And Excel does this fantastic thing of giving you the color coding, and it shows you exactly where the calculations are on the spreadsheet. And then that gives you the flexibility of using Oops, I'm sorry, I accidentally changed that. That gives you the flexibility of using your mouse to move things around. Now, do you know why I can't move these? Because this is a range name, and the range name is going to not be flexible. Let me hit Escape here and go back over to this tab. This one, this one allows me to make the adjustments with the four-headed arrow and the two-headed arrow, because this one's not a range name. This one is an actual range. So. Use range names to make adjustments. Use your two-headed arrow, your four-headed arrow. Double click on your cells. But now you have the tips that you need and the tricks that you need to go into any calculation and make the changes that you might need in that calculation in order to have accurate data. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. 
please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven-day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.